So where to begin with Abraham Lincoln? Don't we know this story? He wins the Civil War and then he gets assassinated? Yeah, so Lincoln may be among the presidents about whom we already know most of the story. Um, but the campaigns of 1860 and 1864 had some subplots that are fascinating. Um, Lincoln's speeches are now considered among the best that a president has given. Um, but at the beginning of his first campaign in 1860, he was considered an uneducated um, kid from the country. Um, he was called a slang-wanging stump speaker. Um, no idea what slang-wanging means. Um, and uh, it got worse. Um, the Charleston Mercury newspaper called him a hard-looking wretch, unfit for office just based on his looks. <laughs> so after his election, Lincoln receives almost uh, daily death threats. Um, and these are by knife, by bullet, by poisoned ink, and in one instance, a spider-filled dumpling. A what? <laughs> <laughs> I know. And when I first uh, heard about the story, I was like, it, this really gets me because my two-year-old would probably look at a dumpling and go like, yeah, I want to eat that. And, uh, and yet he hates spiders. They're like his least favorite thing. So he would just freak out. Um, I don't know many more details about that, but obviously a spider-filled dumpling is not how Lincoln died. Um, but there was even a serious assassination plot before Lincoln took office. Um, they had to sneak him into DC on a train with his security guards infiltrating the potential assassins group. And um, there was a political cartoonist who satirized Lincoln as a scared guy peeking out from a train car um, and even being scared by a cat or scaring a cat. Um, but it's actually the speech Lincoln gives after his inauguration um, that I really wanna focus on here. Um, so when Lincoln won in 1860, um, after you know, almost being assassinated, um, I'm gonna paraphrase some of that speech because um, it's just so applicable today. Um, in our hands, my dissatisfied fellow countrymen, and not in any elected officials, are the truly important issues and powers. We are not enemies, but friends. Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. The mystic chords of memory will yet swell the chorus of union when again touched as surely they will be by the better angels of our nature. So obviously pretty poetic words, but they don't prevent the Civil War. Um, over 600,000 dead Americans later, um, you know, three times the size of COVID, Lincoln wins re-election um, as it becomes obvious that the Union's gonna win the war. But rather than be triumphal about it, he again says just a few words that really ring true today. With malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in what is right, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds. Now, presidents are powerful people, and you've probably had your emotions whipped up by the negativity that characterizes every presidential election at some point. But the day after the election, we will all still be humans and be Americans. We will still put our shoes on one at a time. We'll still look ourselves in the mirror. And what we can ask of ourselves is as simple as sort of treating others the way we would want to be treated. Um, the point of these stories is not to claim that because things have been bad before that we shouldn't worry or that we should feel grateful that things have been even weirder or seem worse before. Um, there's really three points. One, you know, things change. If you compare maps of presidential elections, sometimes different regions of the country are, you know, the polar opposite of what they were a generation ago. Um, and because things change, uh, you know, the, the second point is it, it makes it all the more logical to empathize with other people um, because you may feel like a, a winner or a loser now, but the shoe will be on the other foot at some point. Um, we can feel, feel joy and cheer for the candidate we like while still knowing the difference between sort of cheering for someone and dehumanizing the other um, or the supporters of the other. Um, we can read our friends and classmates' body language and know that there are times and places to share our views more candidly and times and places to just be a decent person and not um, make someone else feel even more stressed out or angry or sad than they already are. Um, so, you know, feel happiness if the candidate you want won. Um, and uh, remember that you didn't win some greater fraction of human dignity. Um, so don't drain someone else's. Um, and if a candidate you wanted to win didn't win, don't despair and don't cede your power or your values over to your lesser angels. Um, be a leader of conscience and lead in a way that will make others want to follow you. Don't sort of deny other people um, decency and dignity. So, um, and then the final lesson is really we can all, uh, uh, you know, have our own ability to improve as individuals and, and as a society. We can grow. Um, so, you know, questions like, is the Green New Deal too expensive? Do police officers enjoy too much qualified immunity? Are we doing enough to improve 21st century education? Um, basically, you know, these are important questions. Um, 
how can we knock off the pandemic so we can all go back to Friday nights in the stadium? Like these are, these are important questions that have real impacts on people's lives. But we'll never get everything we want on all of them. Um, and if we're willing to sacrifice sort of the dignity and humanity of each other, then we'll have sort of sacrificed our own as well. Um, so the sort of the more important question is, um, how do we treat each other when we disagree? Um, we can be passionate and then we can be emotional. Um, and that may get tense or awkward at times. Um, but let's just always remember to, to grow, to empathize with others. Um, and uh, you know, anyone who wants to be their, their best morally or academically or socially treats others as equals. Um, and let's let that um, be the case here too. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Monahan. It seemed to be more hopeful than I thought. Make sure to tune in next week for our final episode where we will talk about glasses that saved a president's life.